Hello everyone, it's James here for another Biome Bite. Today we're going to talk about how you can improve your microbiome, how you can master your microbiome. Now before we go any further, I just want to say that this podcast is for informational purposes only. It does not constitute the practice of medicine or the giving of medical advice. Please always consult with your clinician if you have any queries relating to your medicine. Uh, and that said, without any further ado, I'm back now to how to master your microbiome. So very, very often I hear people say things like, what do I do to improve my microbiome diversity? What do I do to improve my gut health? I've heard about probiotics, prebiotics, FMT, kombucha, kefir, kimchi, and it's all a bit much and I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. So what I'm going to do in this Biome Bite is give a high level overview about some easy, actionable, quick things that you can do, some mindset type things, how to frame your day, how to frame what you eat to try and improve the quality of your microbiome. And ultimately, hopefully, you'll start to see some benefits. So the first tip is to reframe how you look at food. So one way to quickly assess whether or not something is likely to be good for your microbiome and gut health or not is to think, okay, what on this plate is for me and what on this plate is for my microbes and the stuff that's for me are probably the, th the things that taste good um that maybe are very meaty uh maybe are very kind of easily digestible carby if that's even a scientific term uh, whereas the things that are good for your microorganisms are probably the things that our body can't digest. So the non-digestible carbohydrates, the fiber-rich salads, beans, fruits, vegetables, so on and so on. Um, and really the ideal outcome, I think, for everybody is to have something microbiome friendly or to have something leafy, fiber-rich with every single meal that you have. And eventually it becomes a habit like brushing your teeth. How many days over the last year have you not brushed your teeth? Hopefully uh, the answer is very few or ideally zero. And that's because it's an inbuilt habit. It's just something you do uh, when you get up in the morning and go to bed or if you do it more frequently sometimes in the afternoon as well. And if you can have microbiome and gut health in your head all day every day, it starts to imprint itself into what you eat. And ultimately, it's like uh, making investments in, in, in your bank. It pays off, it compounds. The more you do for your microbiome and the more frequently you do it, the better your microbiome is going to be, the more robust it's going to be. Think about feeding your bugs. Now, when you fast and you don't have anything at all, you see dramatic changes to your microbiome because it's got nothing to feed on, but then it rebounds afterwards. Every time you put something in your mouth... Uh, you have an opportunity to improve your gut health and your microbiome. Now, that might sound a bit extreme. Um, and uh, perhaps for um, some people it is. So if you can't commit to doing something microbiome friendly with every meal, and by the way, I don't really mean every single meal. I mean kind of most meals. Think about like 80% rather than 100%. And if you can't do that, something that I like to do and, and something that um, I've recommended to people with success before is have one microbiome meal or have like a microbiome mega shake. So what's a microbiome mega shake and what's a microbiome meal? That is a meal or a shake exclusively prepared for your microorganisms. So you've taken time to fill up that Vitamix or fill up that blender with as much green, as much color, as much fiber as you possibly can maybe some kefir, um, fermentable foods, that kind of thing. And you've made it exclusively to increase your fiber intake or to increase your micronutrient intake, whatever it is. And you get that in and you know you've hit your fiber target and you fed your microbiome for the day. Typically, um, I like to recommend that it's done in the morning because if it's done, then it's done and your microbes are feeding for the rest of the day on the things that they love. And the thing about the microbes is if you feed them, they feed you. They're little chemical factories. And the more you feed them with the things they like, 
the more beneficial things that they produce to help you. Uh, now what's a microbiome friendly meal? It's typically a big bowl or a big plate full of colorful foods, fruits, vegetables, um, leaves. Think color, think rainbows, think diversity. Think about things that are harder to chew, uh, typically meaning that it's full of fiber. Um, and with shakes, and this might sound a bit ridiculous, but what I found is that generally speaking, the worse it tastes, the better it is for you. The ones that you buy uh, from typical supermarkets are usually crammed, loaded, full of sugar, and they taste really good. And actually, they probably don't have much in the way of uh, fibrous content because, well, um, they're juices rather than being proper uh, blended smoothies, um, which you can make yourself. So think about embedding health and gut health and microbiome uh, into your daily routine. Consider the mega microbiome shake, um, mega microbiome blend, could also be a soup. Um, and again, the intention is to get as much good stuff in there as you possibly can uh, so that you're feeding your microbiome and, and your gut. You might be thinking, how, how, how do I feed my microbiome when it's me that's eating it? Well, your body possesses uh, the capability to break down uh, many things into um, components like amino acids and simple sugars, which then go around the body and the bloodstream. But what it can't do is break down non-digestible carbohydrates. Um, hence why they're called non-digestible carbohydrates. Um, and it's only the microorganisms that can break those down. So typically they'll pass into the digestive tract, past the stomach, past the small intestine, and then these microorganisms get to work. And they chew on them, put them into their bodies, and then as chemical factories, they produce metabolites, things like short-chain fatty acids, for example. Um, so there you go. Um, I've not spoken about probiotics. Uh, prebiotics are essentially foodstuffs uh, which promote the growth of beneficial bacteria. So we've spoken about prebiotics in the form of non-digestible carbohydrates. Um, we've not spoken about FMT because that's not something I would recommend to people. I recommend simple, straightforward, easy steps, um, which hopefully are not too expensive either. Supplements are typically expensive. Foods, less so. So there's no easy answer to this is the best possible mega microbiome shake or mega microbiome meal. In some respects, you have to do a bit of try and see for yourself. You have to figure out what you can afford and you have to figure out uh, what you can stomach. That's probably the wrong phrase. But the, the essence there is what you can handle from a kind of taste perspective, what you like, what you don't like. And it takes time to really look forward to these meals. But all the people that I know who've started mega microbiome meals or mega microbiome shakes or essentially have just become predominantly plant-based will tell you that their cravings have changed. They don't crave the chocolate bars anymore. They don't crave the packs of Haribo. In fact, the thought of it makes them feel ill. What they crave is big bowls full of nutrient-dense, minimally processed foods because their microbiome has shifted. And uh, some people think that it's the microbes that drive cravings, at least in part. So I am absolutely sure that when you start off with these mega microbiome shakes or mega microbiome meals and you start loading your plate full of things that you know are going to be good for your microorganisms, full of colour, full of fibre, you wouldn't normally put them together either you start to look forward to it. You start to actually crave it. And then when you go traveling or when you go out to a restaurant and they've got nothing good like that, you kind of think, oh, this isn't going to make me feel good. Uh, so my advice is to start maybe with something not too uh, extreme. Berries, these taste good. Bananas, these taste good. Um, colorful foods full of polyphenols. Uh, and then work up to literally cramming your blender or your plate full of basically everything that's fiber rich. Um, and you'll learn to love it. You will learn to look forward to it. And eventually you won't be able to imagine life without it. Uh, there we go. 
Uh, this is the end of uh, this Buy on Bytes episode. If you have any questions, please reach out to me on James at InsideMatters.health or connect on social media. We'd be very happy to answer them in a future episode. Thank you. Thank you.